Hi everyone, it's Deacon Megan. Uh, it is our first week of Lent, and as I've said before, each week I'm going to be sending you some more information about some of the practices that are in your Lenten packet. And this week there are actually several, because one of them was initially sent as part of your Ash Wednesday material in the kits as they were originally designed. It's called a labyrinth, um, but it's also part of this week's focus and, and practice. And then there's also a printout for something called the Five Finger Prayer. And so I want to go over both of those prayer practices with you very quickly, just so you have a little more information about it. Uh, the Finger Labyrinth is this copy right here. And, and then the practice of a labyrinth is a very ancient tradition. Some of you may think this looks a little bit like the, the puzzles and um, sheets that you have in, the, in a, um, an activity book where you follow the maze and try and figure out which way to go. But a labyrinth is a little bit different in this regard. There's not any stops. Uh, you know how if you try and, and go through a maze, you'll run into a stop and you have to turn around and go a different direction. You have to use your brain and really problem solve and try and think ahead and, and look at what's coming to try and uh, make sure you choose the right path. Well, in a labyrinth, there is no wrong direction. The point of the labyrinth is to focus on where you are and just pay attention to where you are. And you twist and turn and go back and forth and around and around until you get to the very center. So that's the purpose of the labyrinth. It's not to think ahead or try and figure out a problem. It's just being present right in the moment. And so this finger labyrinth helps you to do that, that you, as you trace the white line all the way around, you're just going to pay attention to where you are. There is another printout of a labyrinth in there as well, and it looks a little different, but the same thing applies. You're not going to run into a dead end on a labyrinth. Any type of labyrinth is always going to take you to the center. That's what this season of Lent is about for us. We have to come back to our center, to our hearts, to pay attention, uh, to make sure that we have Jesus in our hearts and that we are being uh, driven by our center. And what I mean by that is that as we think, as we speak, as we act, it is because of Jesus and the love that we have for Jesus that we do and say the things that we do. And so this is a time as we go into Easter and lead up to Easter, where we really reflect and make sure that all of the places in our lives really reflect that love of Jesus. And so this practice of praying using the labyrinth can help us to recenter and help us to come back to our center. The other practice that is in here is a really fun one. It's called the five finger prayer. And in particular, um, you know, you can draw your hand, you can use your own finger, you can use this printout of the hands. Uh, praying for your family and friends, praying for this one right here really s struck me this year because it's for teachers, coaches, healthcare workers, therapists, first responders, etc. As we're in this time of COVID and those who are considered our essential workers, people who don't have a choice about being out, those who are police officers, those who work at grocery stores, those who are doctors, those who are our trash collectors. Let's pray for those individuals, those people who help to make things go on in the midst of this time that we are in where everything's operating a little bit differently. We're gonna pray for our leaders. That's this top one, those people who are in the highest places of power in our world those who are sick and vulnerable and most in need, those who are without shelter, without food right now. We're going to pray for those who are most in need, those who are immigrants, those who are um, struggling to make ends meet. And we're also then going to pray for ourselves, uh, for our own needs. And that's this very teeny tiny last one. Uh, we put these other things first as we are going through our prayer practice. So you can use your hand if you can remember those different things. You can pray for your family and friends. You can pray for those uh, essential workers. You can pray for our leaders. You can pray for the sick and the most vulnerable. And then last but not least, you do pray for yourselves uh, and for your own needs. So that's our five finger prayer that's in there. 
I invite you to do that together as a family, to do that as individuals. And then our devotion this week is a, a devotion that is focused on a scripture from Matthew. And that scripture talks about storing up treasures in heaven. So if you think about treasures, you may think of jewels and jewelry and money and things that are very valuable. Think of something that you worked really hard to be able to go out and buy. Maybe it was a video game console or video games, or um, maybe it was, uh, I don't know, an animal. Maybe it was a horse, um, something that you worked really hard that is one of your prized possessions. What this scripture tells us about is to make sure that those things that we treasure and we care about the most also reflect uh, our priority of making Jesus uh, the center. And so you have in your packet as well an activity that you can do as a family. Uh, they're in the email that I'll be sending with you. It has the um, script that goes along with it, but the printout is in your packets. It's called invisible treasures. What are our invisible treasures? So there are things that are really important to us that we can't see, that we can't hold on to. Our love for each other as uh, members of a congregation, our love for our families. Those are just a couple of examples. And so this exercise invites you to sit down together and talk about those things as a family of what are those things that you really do treasure. And this time, again, in Lent, as we're getting ready and preparing for Easter in the next uh, five or six weeks, this is a time for us to make sure that we have those things, even those things that we can't see, uh, that they're right at the center of our lives and of, of our hearts during this time. So I hope that you find these resources helpful, that you can participate in them as families together. There is also a prayer in at the end of the week that you can use. If you're not sure what words to use, a simple prayer of just saying thank you is sufficient. Meister Eckhart said that if the only prayer we ever say in our entire lives is thank you, that will be enough. Um, there is a printout of a different prayer that you can do uh, and read along. You can also participate in saying and learning the Lord's Prayer together. If you need other ideas and suggestions for how to pray together as a family, then just send me a message. I'll be glad to send you some additional resources. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again.